Gameaholic here. Playing these games and getting a migraine, turning them into dust like Thanos from Endgame. These games are so tough they can't be beat, but it's always entertaining, so have a seat. Screaming and yelling and flipping the bird, he's a gameaholic, haven't you heard? He's got a controller in his hand, trying to get you to understand that these games cannot be beat. So sit back, relax, and grab a can of beer to drink with a friend while he yells at his screen. These games, they never end. The game holic is really mean. Do these bad games. Watch your screen to see what I mean. Fuck you, Johnny. Go fuck yourself. Gameaholic here, and welcome to 2022. And the first thing I have to say is, welcome to the Orange community. That's right. This is the first video of the year 2022. Gameaholic is now a part of your local Orange community. I'd much rather prefer pears or plums, but we're sticking with oranges. Who would have thought? And what a way to start fucking 2022 than to do some other jack off Jingleberry a fucking favor. As if you guys haven't already heard, I was told by side that I had to do a top 10 most violent game video. Let's take a look. I want to know what are your top 10 most violent games of all time. And I hope you enjoy the new year, Sai, because there's a bunch of new shit going on! We celebrated 50 episodes last month. Well, guess what? This year, we are celebrating unpredictability. We're talking about the Gameaholic channel. That's right. This is going to be the year of who the fuck knows what's gonna be next. But before we even get there, let's do this fucking favor for this shit sucker. And let's count down the Gameaholics personal top 10 most violent video games. Coming in at number 10, Dead Rising. Released in 2006 by Capcom, photojournalist Frank West is alerted by a source flying into the town with his helicopter pilot, Ed DeLuca. Yeah, no, not, not DeLuca from fucking Grey's Anatomy. Oh, no, no, fuck you. He learns that the town is a subject to a military quarantine and observes several violent incidents that had happened throughout the town. He's dropped into the mall after asking Ed to return in three days. Arriving at the mall, he learns of a quarantine that is going on due to an outbreak of zombies. Long story short, there is an outbreak of the living dead. Basically, the walking dead with morons. But Capcom basically made a game under the Majora's Mask umbrella, I would say, in my opinion. Because Dead Rising with the three-day cycle where you constantly have to keep running back into the mall, dropping people off, coming back, uh, basically taking anything within the, in the environment and killing these zombies, guns, hockey sticks, you name it, it, it reminds me of Majora's Mask, and that's why it's on this list. Because I have a violent game, anything with zombies is going to be violent, but this is uniquely violent. And that's why it's on this list. Coming in at number nine, fairly lower on this list than you would expect, but I'm okay with it. House of the Dead, three in particular. Released on Xbox in 2002. This is technically first, but it's 19 years after the events of House of the Dead 4. So if you're following the King Kingdom Hearts fucking storyline, here you go. A military force led by retired AMS agent Thomas Rogan heads to a deserted wasteland in an unnamed state on a mission to infiltrate the EFI research facility, once owned by Dr. Roy Curian. 
and investigate its connection to the current state of the world. Now, for anybody who's played House of the Dead, you know how the way the story goes. You basically go in, you're shooting up zombies, etc., etc. But within House of the Dead 3, specifically on Xbox and the Wii, uh, when you go to kill the zombies, it is a very bloody, gory style game. I mean, as any zombie game would be, but literally after you're shooting these friggin' zombies, you pop more pop more bullets into these guys, and it's an overkill of blood. So this will help you get more points, other items for the arcade mode, you name it. The reason House of the Dead 3 is so low on this list is because there is a couple of games I have to throw in past it. But it still made the list, so... Coming in at number eight, not a game I own physically, but a game that deserves to be on the most violent list. Halloween for the Atari 2600. Released in 1983, based off the movie with Jamie Lee Curtis, you play as Laurie Strode watching over a child running away from the serial killer, Michael Myers. Basically, you're probably asking yourself, why does this make the list? Well, there is a history reason to it. 1983, so we're going back about 39 years ago, before I, I was a dimple on somebody's ass then. Because in this game, on Halloween, it is the first game I recall, the decapitation of an, a child in a video game. Now, I more or less don't want to show this because I don't want to get a copyright strike or, or enforce any bullshit like this, but I'm sure there's videos out online, videos on YouTube, screenshots, maybe up your sister's ass while she's going hook the hooky doo doo doo. I don't fucking know. Go check it out if you're a sick bastard like that. But it is the earliest I can recall any type of death or violence in a video game. Coming in at number seven, a game that I do not own physically, but I believe needs to make the list for good reason. Ill Bleed on the Sega Dreamcast. Released in 2001 by Crazy Games, Erica Christie, who is delivering a speech detailing the struggles she faced as a child, being the daughter of a horror theme park designer. In the speech, she reveals that her father would delight in testing and of all of his new horror props and gimmicks on her. Erico's mother filed for divorce and took the then six-year-old Erico with her, estra estranging the absolute shitty relationship between Erico and her father. So, as you can tell, a lot of family bullshit going on. A lot of shitty business that the fucking family can't seem to fucking hash out on their own. But boy howdy is this a fucking crazy game. You get that clock tower kind of feeling when you play Ill Bleed. Now I would like to fucking own this game legit, but it is expensive as shit. And I kind of like the 12 games that I own on my Dreamcast. But we'll always be on the search for it. And it's violent as hell, so... Kind of the reason why the game is on this list. Plus, diverse the list a little bit. Coming in at number six. This is going to piss a lot of people off, but it's my personal top ten, so if you don't like it, go fucking watch Size or go watch somebody else's or eat a bag of shit covered in cream corn with raisins and apple shit on it. I don't give a rat's fucking flying dingleberry. Paperboy, released in 1984 by Midway. Concept of the game is simple. You're a paperboy. You're a kid delivering papers. That's more or less what the game is. You're a fucking kid delivering papers. Now, why did I even think to put this on this list? As a joke? Well, kind of. But in all seriousness, if you think about it hard enough, it is a violent fucking game. All this little son of a bitch is trying to do, little Billy Johnson Jack Jimmy jerk off, whatever the fuck his name is, 
is sitting there just trying to deliver papers. You have a fucking garden gnome that fucking comes to life. You have people constantly driving down the street trying to fucking run them over. You got all these ramps all over the fucking place. A flying t fucking tire. A fucking hula hoop bitch. A construction worker. Are you fucking kidding me? It's 2022, people. The poor guy's just trying to do his fucking job. That's why Paperboy has made the list. Because it shows you the problems of, of everyday people. And all this son of a bitch is trying to do is deliver a fucking paper. And all these fucking pieces of shit getting in his fucking way. When all he's trying to do is give you the fucking news. Fuck the news. Coming in at number five. One of the games has made the list before on my last top ten of DOS. So this one shouldn't come as a surprise. Grand Theft Auto 3, released by Rockstar in 2001. Now the reason this game has made the list, I don't have to explain the story of GTA 3, I'm sure enough of you know it, or have played my ill-mistaken uh, definitive collection. Sorry about that, Rockstar. But I put GTA 3 on this list because Grand Theft Auto 3 is one of those games I played growing up. I played the game when I was about 13 years old, when I shouldn't have, but pulling guns out on people, shooting people randomly on the street, stealing cars, doing fucking missions. Listen, it was a, honestly, it was a great game for 21 years ago. I'm not going to lie. I wish they would actually go back and do GTA 3 right. I would say a justice, but they tried that already and fucked it up. So, GTA 3... You need to fix it. Coming in at number four. Let's throw an arcade game in here. Again. Different type of list we're doing. It's an arcade game. But it was never released. And I know a couple of people out there already know what I'm talking about. Eh. Fuck it. Tattooed Assassins. Wow. An unreleased arcade game that was basically trying to sponge off of the success of Mortal Kombat. There are so many different types of stupid fucking characters. I'm not even going to go through who fucking any of them are in this fucking game. But the game is known for its array of fucking stupid fatalities. There's got to be 10,000 fatalities in this game. You fucking sneeze on the fucking remote. And bam, you did a fatality. You, you fucking, you sit there and you spam the buttons. Bam, you did a fatality. And the reason why Tattooed Assassins is on this list is because of all the fatalities. It's gory as shit. You want to know the release date? I don't care. I didn't do that much research. I just know it's gory as fuck. That's why I put it on the list. So if you don't like that I did my research, eat a bag of eggs covered in shit. Fuck you. So we're knocking it down here to the nitty gritty. We're down to the final three. Well, I was thinking about it and I wanted to say to myself, well, we already had one movie game on the list, but a second one does make the list. For the Xbox 360 and PS3 if you could find it, I think. Saw. The video game. Released by Konami in 2009. The game is set between the first and second movie, where you play as Detective Tap. Uh, it's basically your run of the muck story of Saw. Basically, trying to solve puzzles, treading carefully. I know there's like a foot meter that, um, you know, it's like they're taking shit from Die Hard, I guess, on the original Nintendo. Uh, you basically saw as more or less basically hard to describe. It's 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 got a Silent Hill feel to it, but it's also got a Dead Rising, um, Resident Evil feel to it. You're basically just trying to solve puzzles and uh, get from A to B. You can beat the game in about eight hours, so it's not a specifically long game. Uh, they did have a sequel that came out, Saw Two: Flesh and Blood. Uh, 
which I've heard bad things about, but it's also expensive as shit, so I guess the ends justify the garbage? I don't know. But if you get a chance, at least with the first Saw game, go check it out. Coming in at number two, and I was damn proud to put this as high as it was. Some of you will be proud that I put it this high, and some of you will not be. So for the ones that not, hit that unsubscribe button, or hit the thumbs down, and go fuck yourself. Diablo 2 for the PC. Released in 2000, set shortly after the events of the initial Diablo, the player controls a new hero attempting to stop the destruction unleashed by Diablo's return. The game's five acts feature a variety of locations and settings to explore and battle in, as well as an increased cast of characters to play and interact with. I grew up with this fucking game when I was about 13 years old. I played it a little, little later after release, but I remember going on download.com. Yeah, I'm going back that far and downloading the demo and playing the ever-living piss out of the demo, collecting the gems, the different helms, the different armors, the different weapons, the gold, the axe, everything. Listen, took me forever to finally get my hands on the game physical, and when I finally did play it, holy mother-living shit, I always played the Barbarian. This game skeeved out a 13-year-old me. And to this day, I love playing Diablo 2. I will go back and play it on the PC from time to time because that's the only one I want to play right now. Now, I am aware that we do have Diablo 2 resurrected, but I have one problem with that. And I don't give a fuck about your storage excuses. I don't give a fuck about your digital dickery. Why the fuck is it only a digital release? Put this fucking game as a physical release. Listen, I'll fucking buy it quicker than you could say Humpy Dumpy. I don't give a flying fuck. Give me Diablo 2 physical. I'll fucking buy it in a heartbeat. Take my money. But that's why Diablo 2 is so high on this list because I hold it near and dear to my heart. Which makes a lot of people sit there and think, what's number one? Well, I don't like to do honorable mentions, like I always say, fuck you, Sides, 2022, and that hasn't changed. But I'm going to tell you what it will not be. It's not going to be Resident Evil. It's not going to be Clock Tower. Hell, it's not even going to be a franchise I really love, Fatal Frame. And this might come as a shock to some of you specifically, but I have my reasons. And that's why I do this channel, because I give you my opinion. I tell you what I fucking think, and if you don't like what I think, listen, there's a million other people to fucking watch. I guess I might be the reason why YouTube took away the dislike button. But my number one most glorious game of all time, merely for the finishing moves, and for a part of the story, specifically... Released by Midway in 2002, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. Released in 2002 by Midway. It was the first 3D-esque style next-gen Mortal Kombat game, as I could say, after a lot of people were pissed off about 4. But if I need to, dis to say anything, it's... What else could I say? Shang Tsung and Quan Chi become the ever-living fucking piss leaders in this game and basically go to the Wushu Academy and kick the ever-living shit out of Kung Lao. And spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't played this game, tough shit, then stop the video. I don't give a fuck. They beat the shit out of Liu Kang. And guess what? They kill him. Right in the first fucking two minutes of the game. You're just watching the preview video to get into the game. And you fucking kill the main character. Holy shit. A fatality without a fucking fatality. This is how I initially felt when this fucking game first came out. 
The Amir shock factor of Liu Kang being axed from a Mortal Kombat game was incredible. Fucking incredible. Because they did that, you sucked me in. I'm not gonna lie, the story of the rest of the game more or less lies in the endings. Because the, the story mode or the season mode or the tower or whatever the fuck you want to call it is basically you play each individual character, you collect gold, and you unlock characters. And that's more or less the story mode. There's really nothing else. The actual story lies within playing the arcade ladder mode and watching the endings. That's pretty much the best way to say it. Not to mention that a awesome band, might I add, that got me into listening to them, did a music video for this, Edema. Oh my God, what a fucking great band. And that's why, that's my reasoning behind why Mortal Kombat, Deadly Alliance, is one of the most glorious games of all time. Because yes, the fatalities are super gory, some of them are super stupid, but initial gore to a legendary next generation game that also draws you in in the first two minutes of the game with shock value. I don't even care if people shit on this game and initially say, fuck you, it's no, nah, no, fuck you. The shock value is what brought me into this game when I first fucking played it. And that's why I consider Deadly Alliance one of my most violent video games of all time. And that is my top 10 most violent video games. And like I said, it's 2022 and we're here. It's the time of unpredictability. We don't know what, what's going to happen. We don't know how this year is going to go. We don't know anything. That's why the Gameaholic is ready to let the mysteries of life carry on. Let, let bygones be bygones with life itself. I My fucking new neighbor. Making all kinds of fucking ruckus, blasting all kinds of fucking yes, yeah, son of a bitch. I'm gonna I'm gonna go fucking tell him. Hold on a second. Hey asshole! Asshole! Hey, asshole! 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 How many times have I told you about keeping the goddamn music down? You son of a bitch! Turn it down! Hello! Hello, dipshit! Earth to pink fuck! <laughs> <laughs>